Thank you for listening to Compass Unfiltered. I'm your host, Checo. As your co-host, Noe. What up? Yes, sir. Uh, today, we have a guest. Que, bro, if you're a musico, especially from Chicago, and if you see his mustache <laughs> or you see that last name, bro, on the, on the back of the shirt and you're walking in and you already know who your engineer is, you know you're in good hands, brother. Let's go. <laughs> Thank, My you, bad. Man. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Well, Patino, what's, what's going on, brother? Welcome to Compass Unfiltered. What's going on, man? Thanks Welcome. for having me on the podcast. For sure. Welcome, brother. Este, um, man, well, I've, I've known you for, for a few years, bro. Yeah, I stay from Cristalera. I want to say I met you, bro. And did you ever um, set up in uh, Atlantis? I think that was in. Uh, was that Elk Grove Village or something like that? I think that was like one of your oh, like my man. first gigs. What I had seen you at, it was early, early, bro. You didn't yeah. have the mustache, probably, like bro. The, I didn't always have the mustache. It, no. it, I kind of grew it out as a joke, and then it just kind of and it stood. It, it stuck with me. It stuck. Well, actually, I grew it out because I was doing MMA at the time, and then I was training, and I was gonna have a fight, and then. Uh, I grew it out just so that I can go like the old boxing stands like mm -hmm. that to the old to the other guy and just to fuck around. And then um, that guy ended up getting injured, and then the fight never happened. Oh, and then after shit. that, okay, well, I, gracias a Dios, compa, gracias. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that happened, and then um, I'd go out places, and girls would be like, "Hey, can I take a picture with you?" And I'd be like, "Oh, okay, cool." You know, and for me that kind of turned like I was single at this time, so it was like. Just to clarify yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said that with a little bit of fear in his, uh, in his voice. We're going to engineer that, bro. We'll take care of the voice. No, no, no. <laughs> so I'd go out, right? And then girls would be like, hey, can I take a picture with you? And I'd be like, yeah, that's cool. And I'd use it as like my pickup line. I'd be like, yeah, you know, give me your number. Send me the picture, too. I want to see it. You know. The next thing you know, you're out bar hopping and they text you like, oh, what bar are you at now? And I'd be like, I'm over here. Come to this bar. I'd go out to Wrigleyville a lot. That's why. All you know, man. not a Cubs fan or anything, but the kind of bars and yeah, shit. Dope yeah, place to be at. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's a good atmosphere out there, bro. Definitely. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah, especially because I used to just take one bus up there if I didn't want to drive, because you know, fucking parking out there is horrible. I just just take the Addison bus, like would drop me off right in front of all the bars. Fuga. Yeah. yeah, that's what's up. That's a spot to go to. Um, so it's the Patino, bro. That's yours. Is it you and your dad? The well, it's me and my dad. Uh, we go halves and everything. He's the one who started the company. When he used to, my dad was a musician. He had his band. They brought, they were like, uh, this was like when I was a little kid. Uh, he had his band and all together they said, oh, let's buy equipment, you know. And he was the only one with a garage. So we would just have it in the garage and he'd be like yo musicos vengan to load up right before the gig and then sometimes musicos would not show up to load for the gig you know yep yeah so then my dad got tired and he was like man you know like nobody comes to help me load up the damn truck and shit like that so then after that the band fell apart and uh, uh, what kind of music was it back then? is that grupero uh, uh back then, yeah they were more versatile. Uh, versatile yeah my dad had a band where they played a lot of techno banda too oh, okay. they were called patino's band they used to wear the little vest with the frilly thingies. Yeah. For sure, for sure. <laughs> you know? Some fucking yeah. no bailes el caballito yeah, type shit. Stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know? Dope, dope. So after that, the band just kind of like fell apart. And then other bands would hit, my, hit up my dad. And they'd be like, hey, uh, how much to just use your sound system, you know? Because we're going to go play at some place and we don't have a sound system. They want, to, they want us to bring a sound system. And my dad would be like, oh, okay, well, it's going to be this much, you know, come pick it up. And they would, they'd come pick it up. Next thing you know, it's like other bands would be like, yo, so-and-so told us that they rented your sound system. And then that's how it would go. I was like in third grade. And then uh, my dad bought another sound system. And then he'd be like, hey, because I don't really know anybody who would run a sound system. Dude, I'm in third grade. I was like, fucking... I don't know. How old are you when you're third grade? Thirteen? No. Well, in fifth, you're ten, bro. In fifth, you're ten? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. So you were eight, bro. <laughs> you were, <laughs> yeah, you so, were the shit, dude. Yeah. You're like, thirteen. You were meant, bro, uh, for the business, yeah. dog. I, well, that's how it happened, though. Yeah, so I you remember, were in third grade? I was in third grade. I remember he would take me along to some of these gigs. Boy, it'd be like midnight, and I'd be like, why am I still awake? You know, like, I just want oh, to Oh, finally sleep. kicked in and shit. Super yeah. Nintendo wasn't there. All of a sudden, you're sleepy. <laughs> yeah. ah, <caca. laughs> you know? And then that's how it went off. Um, 
I started taking my like my own truck. Like he'd have an uncle of mine come around and be like, "Yo, drive him to a gig." And I'd be like, "All right, cool. Drive me to the gig." And then I'd get there and I'd be like, "Fuck, I don't remember how to connect anything." Damn. Because you know you're young as fuck. Yeah. You get nervous. That's yeah, probably yeah. part of it too. You know, you get nervous. You're like, "Fuck, fuck, am I yeah, gonna do bro, this right?" I was, I was like fourth grader by then. By that time, that happened. So I was like, "What the fuck?" Like, but well, your dad was old school. Yeah. And like, then I'd call him and be like, "Hey, pops, how do you connect this?" And he'd be like, "What the fuck? Didn't I show you? You know, like." This weekend in the garage or some shit, I'd be like, ah, yeah, but I forgot. <laughs> so my first gigs always sucked. I feel bad for those bands. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Your uncle didn't help you at all? He didn't, uh, or he, he, was, he didn't know anything either? He was just a driver carrier. Okay. Like, he was just the guy who would be in charge of driving me to places because I was like a fourth grader. Oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. drive, you know? So he would just help me carry stuff that was too heavy for me, and that was it. Well, Yo, bro, but I feel like whenever you're hooking up shit like that, even though you are hooking up the same equipment all the time, like something different always goes wrong, bro. It's not the same error every time. Am I correct or no? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, we I had yeah. one right now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we literally, before before the podcast started, we literally had just yeah. had that. So, so damn, that's I crazy, it. bro. I get it. I get it too, bro. I remember having you hitting hitting me up like, "Yo, bro, set up." This and that, and like I'm calling you back, like yo, this shit, it, I don't know what else to do, bro. What, <laughs> what else? But this is for Cristalera and shit. I, yeah, it's that's, funny. That's how it happened, man. You know what? My, I think maybe it was when I was like around fifth or sixth grade. Now I, I started getting more the hang of it, and then uh, my <clears> dad landed like these set of like there's like series of gigs that were like every week, but it was at a bar. It's like this bar in the south side. It's like this straight up, like. One of those like super old paisa bars where just like people go to shoot pool and it's just like really old. The random hoes sitting around. Yeah, you know, one of those bars. <laughs> <laughs> one of those. And like, I'd you, be, I've never been, but yeah. one of those. And I'd, be, yeah, and I'd be working there and I'd be like a sixth grader there. Like, people would just be like, what the fuck? Why is there a little kid inside the bar? You know? Yeah. I'd be like, he's the guy that runs the sound. But even then, I would still like barely, you know, like. There was always something going wrong, you know, at those damn. times, you know. It was like, damn. <laughs> and these were live bands that were playing at these bars. So you were saying yeah. before that. So it's not like you were DJing yeah. or anything. No, I like wasn't that. DJing. I was uh, actually, I started wanting to be a DJ at one point, but then I was like, yeah, I don't, that's not my thing. You're to to the live music? Yeah. yeah. Being a D, I think being a DJ is harder work than actually doing like the engineering for some reason. But that's just my opinion because uh, being a DJ, you have to learn how to read a crowd and stuff like that. And then you got to put up with people asking you for songs. Like you, you could be playing Norteñas or some hip hop and somebody will, become, somebody will come up to you and they'll be like, can you play this song? That's not even in that genre. And then they'll be bothering you. Can you play this song? Can you play this song? Yeah. And you'll be like, damn it, man. Wait till I get to that, you know. that type of music. Yeah. Right. And, and that's one thing too is that uh, how people when they hire you, whether it's more for like privadas, right? Mm -hmm. They confuse you as for a DJ where they, yeah. they kind of uh, take Seekin You know yeah. they're kind of like Hey put this like, put that you Can know? you play this Can you play that And I'll be like Oh well You know I just got a computer That plays Spotify <laughs> <laughs> And you'll do it <laughs> Fuck it you know, Yeah I'll do it I'll, I'll play it here and there You know But uh, it's a, it's in one of the When I rent out Like a package or whatever Somebody will call me up And they'll be like Yo I need audio For a wedding I'll be like Cool um, Are you fine with music Just being played off a computer Like nothing specific Like just random mixes That I already have made you know, that other DJs from Chicago give to me, and I'll just, yeah, I'll play my, at whatever party, you know? Because I'm not a DJ. My thing is, you know, to make the band sound good. Because you know, a lot of people, when they hire bands, they kind of really don't care about the DJ, you know? And I'll let them know. I'll Facts. Uh, yeah. I'll let them know. I'm just going to play music from premium mixes, you know? If you want a DJ, I'll bring a DJ, but it's going to cost you this much. Because I got to pay a guy to be mixing and stuff like that, you know? And a lot of people, they'll be like, yeah, that's cool. And, like uh, bring him along Yeah and other people Will be like Nah we don't care About the DJ Ya tienes uno Like on hand already Or you go with Different guys Uh, No I have one on hand Okay cool Yeah cool. he's been working With us forever and ever Yeah Dope, dope. Yeah for sure Um, Another thing I was Going to ask you bro Like how far Or how uh, how big Has the team gotten now Because you are saying It's run out Or it was You and your pops Yeah Has that team expanded Uh, Yeah Yeah we're like 20 people Or pre-COVID We were like 20 people Oh damn! But uh, now that like COVID hit, like we're, I'm experiencing where I like I'll have like double gigs on weekends or whatever, like rare right now. But I'll hit up people that usually work with me, and I'll be like, "Yo, what are you doing this Saturday?" Because I I have to ask them now, like, "Are you able to work on Saturday?" Because they got a job now. 
Oh, damn. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, so they got a job and they're like, dude, I, I kind of work and they kind of forcing me to work weekends. And since I'm new, they don't let me <laughs> just take off weekends whenever I feel like. And I'd be like, oh, all right, cool. You know, so it's it's a little hard, you know, because I can't keep everybody, I can't keep 20 people working. Yeah, you, you can't know? keep them employed if there's no yeah. work coming in. And then especially because I pay them cash. So, <laughs> you know, if there's no cash coming in, there's... Yeah, what can you do? Yeah, what but can I do? pre-COVID, you had about, about 20 employees, Muscle Metals? Yeah. Or a team? Yeah, a yeah team a, about team, 20 a team of 20 people. Yeah. Yeah, because we were building uh, stages... That were, plat- that were done by platforms and trusting, stuff like that. To build a stage, it used to take us like, I don't know, like four people in like an hour and a half. Yeah. And then, That's kind of fast though, man. Well, yeah, because we were kind of used to it. Oh, yeah. I mean, ya saben lo yeah, yeah, yeah. que van a hacer. Yeah, you know. It, it, it's a lot harder when you get a bunch of people that don't know how to do it. And then it'll be like that hour and a half job is going to take you like four or five hours. Oh, yeah. I mean, it took me an hour and a half to build a little racetrack for my son, bro. So I could just imagine how long, <laughs> how long it's going to take me to build a stage, bro. Oh, With not knowing. It's not la neta, compa, la neta. And yeah. it came with instructions, bro. I mean, it was... <laughs> Did you <laughs> actually read them? No. That's, see, that's why it took you an hour and a half, bro. Oh, man, that's, that's how I build things, too. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah, bro. You got to get creative, bro. Like, yeah, este no cabe aquí, compa. Hold on, hold on. Give yeah, it Because it second. tells you L goes with P, where in your ear to some other shit. Fuck it up. <laughs> that's yeah, the truth, though. That's how I build things, too. Yeah. I get home and I look at the box and I be like, it's got to look like that yeah that was exactly <laughs> what i was doing right in a lie bro just going out for the picture yep yeah yep <laughs> i thought it was gonna be faster bro no <laughs> yo so when you were doing all these uh these things as a kid dude um and you said it got better when you got to like 13 or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. and at that point you knew you loved it or todavía no oh man you know what at that point i was like this is what i want to do i was like i don't ever want to work anywhere else <laughs> You so, know, so as you went through school, you also focused on the engineering part of it too. Yeah, like in high school, and then after high school. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Te, te enfocaste when en eso I, también. When I started high school, I was already working like bailes and uh, places. You know, places that I wasn't supposed to be at because I was underage. You're supposed to be 21. You know, so I would work at like random clubs or random bailes. You know, <clears throat> and then like it was funny because. Sometimes I think I'd run into teachers at like violence and shit. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, like I'd have I'd have teachers from like high school that were paisas, you know, and they they'd go to like La Quinta de los Reyes or whatever back when they used to do them all yeah. the way out there. And um they'd go out there and they'd be like, "Hey, aren't you one of my students?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, but I work here." <laughs> <laughs> you know, they'd yeah. be like, "Oh, okay." And then it was funny cuz once they were kind of drunk or whatever, they like, hey, you want to take some shots with this? Like, yeah, oh, I was like, I'd be like, you're like, oh, bitch, okay, I'm only cool. 13. <laughs> you know, Did you? Was a yeah, I would take some shots <laughs> with the teachers. <laughs> and you they know? were free, bro. I looked at it as in, like, if they see me here and when they see me in school and I have them as a, you know, as a teacher, they're going to let me <clears> pass. <throat> they're going to be dope, man. <laughs> yeah. That's what's up. So you went to college too, bro, for this? Um, well, no, when I graduated high school, actually, um, I. I really didn't think I needed college, but I did go to take a course for recording, you know, for uh, because we wanted to start a recording studio. Well, we did start a recording studio, but then I, I kind of liked it at first, but then it, it just kind of grew. I, Tampoco I grew out of it. No, it wasn't for me because um, when you're in a recording studio, you have to make sure everything's perfect. A band can play a song, and then after that, you have to dissect the song. And each instrument has to do their certain recording of that song, you know. So the saxophone player has to play this part, the whole song, whatever. You record that, right? But then it's like, oh, shit, he fucked up over here on this part. On minute so-and-so. And then you have to go there and re-record it. And if he doesn't do it like right, then you have to re-record it. And then the next thing you know, you're re-recording the same song like a thousand times. Really tedious, repetitive yeah. and shit. And then I was just like, damn, I kind of hate this song by this time. <laughs> You know, yeah, so, for, so sure. for me, it was just like, ah, uh, maybe not. You know, I like the more like the live audio stuff, like making a show happen, you know, making them sound good at that moment when they're performing, you know. So for me, that's where it's at. I like live, live events and stuff, you know. So you feel like you learned everything more on the way as, as you went doing <clears throat> bigger shows, bigger shows, bigger shows? Yeah, well, definitely. So yeah. Reading the manuals of things. <laughs> really? You know, and then trying things, you know. 
like hey i like the way this sounds let me try to work this compressor like that you know and then all by ear yeah i, I do most of this stuff by ear damn you know so it's uh it's it's fun now know? do you feel like people that went to school for this shit will like hear this and be the frown upon it like wow what the fuck like you should know or you know uh, like more like the literal part of it or no it's not even like that uh maybe not man you can go to school and graduate but then if you don't ever really do the stuff that you were taught like taught that you know that you learned in school then it's like doesn't really work out como no estás ejerciendo lo que aprendiste or whatever yeah and you for know. you it's more like on the spot ear physically yeah. doing it learning it and oh, yeah, i fucked up there or i learned oh shit this is doing exactly. that exactly yeah. okay that's dope as hell bro yeah, no, and i think most jobs are like that though no bro like, the, yeah because like they, you can they can teach you anything in a classroom and in, in whatever kind of setting it is yeah but once yeah. you're actually out there and you're doing stuff you know that's when you're like oh shoot i mean they didn't really teach us that but now i know i can do this or that you know yeah sure. definitely yeah for sure bro uh, well, I know we look forward to seeing you, bro, seeing um, uh, your pops or whoever was from, from your team. Because, mm -hmm. we, man, we complain so much, bro, about, about engineers, bro. <laughs> but honestly, like, his his crew, bro, whether it be him or, or whoever was in his crew that was um, doing the engineering that day, it's like you guys don't este, how can I say this, bro? Like, where you guys are not um, biased or or... I guess hating or, or whatever you want to call it, you know, because we'll, we'll talk to the engineers like, hey, bro, si le puede subir un poquito? And they're just kind of like, like, it is what it is, you know? Yeah. But there are some musicals that we're fucking dicks, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Anybody you want to name? Like, yeah. you, no, we can't. The, oh, I mean, we're on filter, but we, you know, <laughs> we still <laughs> out there. He's still doing his thing. We can't, you know what I mean? We, <laughs> He's like, no, don't but shout But he knows. Uh, <laughs> There's he, probably some people that he knows that, you know, I mean, whatever. Not dicks. I don't know if it's it. just me, but I haven't come across like musicals that have been dicks to me. Not to you specifically? No, not to me specifically. What about your crew? Like, they're totally like, man, what? Yeah, maybe to my some of my crew members just because, uh, but they weren't like local musicians. They were like musicians from out of town. Oh, because okay. they expect things to be a different way, and they'd be like, "Yo, okay, cool," but nobody told us it was supposed to be like that. So, right, you better slow. It's your always mouth. a misunderstanding. Yeah, yeah, right. so it's always a misunderstanding. Yes, yeah, stuff like that, you know. But we tell them, you know, and nobody told us it was supposed to be like that. You know, slow your roll, <laughs> or else you don't play. You know, ulti yeah. ultimately, I'm in charge of the sound system, and if I don't want you to play, you ain't gonna play. You know, I don't care who you are. You might be famous and whatnot, but hey, you know. yeah, fuck it. <laughs> but that's never happened to you, though. You never, never been no. in this kind of situation. No, never. No, that's good. Uh, well, I was just gonna say, bro. Like you're the sound guy. If I'm the musician, bro, I, I probably shouldn't be talking shit or getting the sound guy upset because then my sound, my set is probably gonna be fucked. You know? Yeah, probably. Which yeah. I'm sure. Have you done that, bro? What? Low key, sabotage oh. somebody's sound. No, nah, <laughs> like, man, you know what? Because then that looks bad on me. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh shit. Like, damn, that sound. Yeah, like, Alicia like Keys Ali Ali like, no. key sounded like Snoop Dogg. Like, oh shit, that was the engineer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, well, see, here's the thing is uh, when they're on stage, they're the only one with mics. I don't mic myself. So they could just straight up say, oh, you know, the sound is fucked up. And everybody in the crowd would be like, oh, it's the sound guy's fault. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I treat it, I, I try to make everybody sound good because for me that's potential customers. For sure, you that's know? a great way of thinking of it, and it's and it's the truth. Yeah, yeah. And if the band sounds good, you know they'll hire me, and then uh, everybody else is just gonna be like you know happy. So that's that's the way to do it. Make everybody sound good, even if you get into a fight with them like five minutes before they hit the stage or whatever. <laughs> but you've so, never experienced un pesadito like or somebody famous acting like dickish or nothing like that. Like everybody's been cool. Like your the your whole career has been pretty smooth sailing yeah. at least along those lines. Yeah, everybody's been pretty cool. You know, uh, sometimes they'll ask for like things that just well, when out of towners like big groupos come by, they'll they'll send what is called a writer, which is like a list of things that they want in order for them to perform. Like Gerard Ortiz will send you one, and they'll want a certain amount of speakers, a certain amount of mics. You know, and then you go back and you tell the the promoter like hey this is how much it's gonna cost you for all that stuff and they're like holy shit i don't have that you know because let's say i'm gonna use it out of these as an example he'll send a writer and it'll be like certain amount of speakers certain amount of mics uh brand name things like certain brand name speakers you know and then you'll tell them you'll go and tell the promoter like hey i don't have some of these things but i can get them but this is how much it's gonna cost you and it'll be like Anywhere from like 10 to 15 grand. 
Damn. And they'll be like, holy shit, I got to pay that out of these what he's going to, for what he's yeah. going to pay. And then I got to pay you 15 grand. And they'll be like, dude, just put whatever you have, you know? And that then it is what it is. And then sometimes you do, you just come with whatever you have. And then um, engineers or musicians will show up and be like, yo, none of the things that we asked for are here. You know, you like deal with the guy that you told him. You know? Yeah. So sometimes they'll take it up with you and they'll be like, why didn't you bring the stuff? I'll be like, look, man, this is what I was paid to bring. You know how it works. Talk to the promoter. And that's they do. Was, yeah. yeah. That's that's usually my first thing to do. Talk to whoever hired you, man. Hey, you know, who has asked for stuff like that, though, bro? Like the example um, that you gave was one of them? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Damn. They've asked for things, you know, Jesus. certain speakers, you know. And uh, and what the, type of speaker would he be asking for? Like, this legit or like, is it? No, oh, yeah. It's some top notch it, shit. It's like some top notch shit. Yeah, yeah, that's our homie and shit. Shout yeah. out Hidardo, bro. You're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you're listening, bro. <laughs> you're, you're talking about like uh, a sound system that would have cost like like anywhere from like three hundred or four hundred thousand dollars to buy. Damn, you damn. know. Right. So, so at this point, mm-hmm. you would probably be renting it to bring it. Yeah. Jesus. You know? So it, it's crazy how that works out. <laughs> yeah, that's wild, bro. That's nuts, man. And then the them prices, bro. That's ain't cheap, bro. No, hell we're over here complaining about Compass Unfiltered equipment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ardo, you tripping, bro? <laughs> Chill out, dog. Chill out. Uh, that's but crazy. that's every band, bro. Every band. They want top notch shit. Them yeah. fools from Cristalera were some dicks, bro. Uh, <laughs> 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 they always wanted some wild shit, bro. Their list no, was wild, bro. bro. No, that, I think that's every band. It comes with the fame. They want to put on a good show, so they want top-notch things, you know. Uh, uh, for example, like, uh, when Larry Hernandez first started with, like, Canción del Baleado and stuff, bro, he played at Islas for free, and it wasn't even that packed, <laughs> you know. And then, like, a few years later when he was big, he was asking for, like, big equipment that would cost, like, 15 grand to put up and stuff like that, you know. No, so I then, mean, it wasn't going to better his voice. I'm not sure why you would ask for that. <laughs> yeah, but... but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was going to say, exactly. <laughs> These are potential customers, Patino. Yeah. Come on, bro. I'm just setting you up, dude. Nah, I'm just talking shit. Oh, nah, that's that's man. our guy too, bro. So Larry, no, we shot out everybody. <laughs> shit, we shot out everybody today, bro. No, Patino's here and shit. That's dope. That's dope, bro. Yeah, that's what's up, bro. Uh, at what point, bro, did you guys start um, doing audio for like bigger events? Uh, like specific, like where how old were you? You were like 14, 15, 16, 16 maybe oh, when you were eighteen. Man. Like we started doing like them bigger, more audio, more. What started, man? I don't, I don't have a timeline for this. It, it's just started like uh, maybe when I was like still in high school. I think Herradura had just barely started. Okay. Um, I think they started making at first caripeos, you know, um, promociones Garibaldi. I don't know if you guys remember them. Garibaldi, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, Garibay. Oh, no. Yeah, Garibay. Yeah, Garibay. Okay, okay. Um, he started making <clears throat> jaripeos, and he would start bringing grupos like Voz de Mando. And it, at first, it'd be like, okay, it's just going to be a small stage, small audio. But then it started getting real packed. And then it's like, next thing you know, next week, it was even more packed. And so on and so forth. And then it was like, oh, shit, we got to start getting a bigger audio. Um, it wasn't enough. The people were louder yeah. or some shit. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, you're talking about 4,000 people at first, you know, like, the little sound system that we used to put for, like, the 600 people was not enough. People in the back would be like, yo, we can't hear anything. Damn. Damn. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even think about it like that, bro. You know? but- so, it was like, we went from, I think, some of the first events at, at uh, Nagaribaldi, um, Herradura, I, I can remember one of them was Voz de Mando, and they played on top of a... Little traila that they had out there. One of those trailers, they just put it up as a stage and they were like, that's it. That's where you guys are going to play. And the guy was like, just bring speakers for like 100 people or whatever. Dude, there was like 4,000 people there. Damn. They were like, oh shit. You know, so yeah, that was kind of fucked up. Cause, like, but people, that wasn't your mistake either. It no, was like, it, it was yeah. yeah. But then it was like, <clears throat> after that, we're like, we're going to need something bigger, you know. And you start telling promoters, like, hey man. You know, I understand you don't want to spend a whole lot, but, you know, you're not going to have a crowd if they can't hear anything. So it's going to be this much for now. And they'd be like, okay, cool. They understood them in. Yeah. And then that's how it starts. Um, All of a sudden, groups that come from the outside, they talk to other groups that come from other states. And then they'll be like, hey, you know, whenever you go to Chicago or whatever, hit up Patino. He has the stuff, you know, stuff that you need to sound good for a larger crowd, stuff like that. And then next thing you know. 
we're buying staging, we're buying lights, we're buying all these things. You know, I own generators now because I work at a lot of ranchos and ranchos don't have electricity, bro. <laughs> you know, you need that. Yeah. yeah, you need to provide your own electricity. You buying specific generators too, bro, for like lower sound or a generator is a generator it sounds loud as uh, fuck? No, um, it's specific generators. Okay. I use uh, anything up from like 35,000 watts and up, and it has to be three phase. So, so son específicos para también yeah. para el sistema. Yeah, exactly. You know, because uh, <clears throat> you can underpower things and it won't sound as good as it needs to. You know, just because breakers will be going out and shit like that. This, uh, I had another question. Now that we're all up on the on the equipment mm -hmm. side, have you ever fucked up some expensive equipment, bro? Like, oh yeah, it's happened. Damn. Yeah. Um, what was the most expensive shit you fucked up? And then uh, you had to call your pops like, yo, pops, we got to go 50-50 on this shit. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Again? Again. Again. Um, speakers. I, I think speakers, yeah, they get popped or whatever. It, it'll rain and next thing you know, you're like, oh, damn, we didn't cover them in time. And, you know, stuff like that. Mixers get wet. Uh, one of my MacBooks got wet one time. It was a brand new MacBook Pro. I was like, dang. But, you know, it's, a MacBook Pro is not as, as expensive as a speaker. You know? What does a speaker, like a, a good speaker, cost? Like for an event like Herradura <clears throat> for, you know, 4,000 plus people? Um, well, it all depends on what you're trying to do. But I would say anywhere from like 5,500 to 6,000 bucks for one. Damn. Then you need like a, at least a minimum of like 10. So if you uh, you pop one before or whatever you're like looking yeah. at at a big ass loss right there. Yeah. Jesus oh yeah. Christ, yeah. Bro. Yeah. That's what that's what sucks about it. Sometimes it's like you can't charge too cheap because if something gets messed up, then that goes your day. That, that you know. That's yeah, just, it has to cover. That's that. a loss. <laughs> Hell yeah. That whole day is a loss. You know. But that's a that's the nature of the business. You know. Team yeah. one. And, and, and some of that stuff is not, I mean, obviously, because you said like the rain or whatever, but uh, is it really just, is, I mean, wear and tear, no? I mean. uh, Yeah, wear and tear is, uh, it's pretty big. Um, I'll, right now, a lot of my speakers, they've seen nothing but like dust from all these ranchos. You know, I would do, I would do Herradura, uh, Rancho 57, and Toyota Park all in the same weekend. And it's just like. And you're using the same same yeah. equipment. Dust. It's just so. all dust, bro. So how yeah. do you clean that? Or like it just it takes an impact uh, and yeah, when there's time to switch up, you gotta switch up? Well you air compress it, you know. You can get an air compressor and you try to clean it as best as you can, but you know, some blow of it out. Yeah, some of it stays stuck in there and faders on mixers just won't work how they used to. You know. Yeah. Speakers get covered with dust where they're not supposed to have dust. Connections, you know, they'll start sounding oh, yeah. kinda there's a lot cables of there. and stuff. Cables will make noise when they're not supposed to make noise. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it, it's just all wear and tear, you know. Since you brought Rancho 57, uh, bro, were you there when all that bullshit went down at Rancho 57? Well, no. Who was it? Fantasma? <clears throat> who was it supposed to be there, no, bro? No, it was... Um, you remember what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. I, I don't know what group was supposed uh, to play, yeah, though, remember. but... I thought it was... I thought no, it was it, no? It was one of those Smoke Me Out tours, I think it was. I don't remember, bro. I, I don't remember. We weren't there. We were at actually at Herradura that day. Uh, but my guys were out there. Um, Fuera Salitiva. They're another sound company, with, which we're cool with. We are actually very cool <coughs> with a lot of the sound companies that are out there. Uh, I would like to think that Patino's music is not just us. It's all of us working together. Because a lot of our things get rented out to other companies. Okay, you know, okay. I don't put logos on my things. Like my generators, they don't have signs to say Patino's music because I rent them out to other sound companies and they don't want something that will have my logo on at their gig, you know. So I get along with all of them, like, you know, and then I don't see them as competition. I just see them as like friends and, you know, colleagues. Co-workers or, or yeah, colleagues co or whatever. Yeah, you know, especially with the, with the home mobile stage that we got, um, it doesn't have any logos because I want everybody to use it. It's better for me that it goes out to work than just sitting at home for my gigs or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And you can't be at every event, bro. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like but they said. were the ones out there that day, and uh, they actually got a lot of their equipment messed up. I bet, bro. Yeah. That shit was wild that as hell. That shit was wild, bro. Uh, people were just 
I, you know, throwing beer bottles, trying to knock shit over, you know. And this was where somebody didn't show at the end or didn't play, no? <clears throat> no, well, what happened with that was the event was canceled halfway. Yeah. yeah. And the big the big star that was supposed to sing at the end didn't come out or some shit, no? I don't well, because since it got canceled, yeah. they, they had a lead. Forgot Everybody who it was, had a I forgot who it was, too. I don't know. I don't know, but I remember that. Yeah, I remember those I wasn't there, but I mean... I saw the videos. And I saw shit. the videos. That was wild. Yeah, that was wild. that's why I brought it up. I was like, "Man, were you there?" Because I figured equipment got fucked uh, up that day. No, I wasn't there, but I, I, I didn't bother informing myself too much about it either. I just know that it sucked. Yeah, for, I for bet. the sound people, <laughs> for everybody. The, those probably, are the bro. guys I sympathize with the most, you know, because I was like, "Damn, ellos qué culpa tienen." Yeah. <laughs> Has anything like that ever happened to you guys, bro? Like whether it be a baile or una privada. Yeah, because for us paisas, like, you know, especially for privadas, uh-huh. so there's always fights. No, you know I don't, I mean? I don't did, think we've ever did, gotten uh, anything messed up like that. No? No, I had a dude threaten me once at Herradura. <laughs> for real? Yeah, um, this was when El Commander was going to play, uh, and he was kind of taking a little while to get to the stage, and this drunk dude comes up to me and he goes, hey, man, what the fuck? What time is El Commander going to play? Why isn't he on stage already? And I was like, dude, I don't know. What the fuck? We're waiting for him, too. You know, yeah. and then he goes, man. If he's not playing in five minutes, I'm gonna come back and fuck you up. I'm like, what? Not the? Too much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like, I'm ready, yeah, bro. <laughs> I, was, I was like, oh, really? I'm like, you know, I'd you love were to MMA see you already. Too. Yeah. Oh, hey. I was like, like hey. he's ready. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'd love to see you try. Come back in five minutes. And uh, dude never came back. I mean, whatever. <laughs> he was drunk, you know. <laughs> but that, that's about as close call as it got. You know, it was. I was like, okay, the hell, like. Relax, <laughs> Simon. So, what what has been some of the bigger stars that you that you've worked with, bro? Um, <clears throat> let me see. I've done like almost every band that's regional mexicano, like that you can think of. You know, Manda, boom. MS, MS, yeah, because MS did a lot of their gigs when they came to Chicago <clears throat> with all Herradura, you know. Um, Calibre 50. Calibre 50 was probably the last big event. big event that we did before COVID. And then uh, last year during COVID, we did Rieleros, Polurias, uh, La Maquinaria. Damn, that's a good yeah. that's a good set right there, bro. It was a badass baile. That was sounds a, dope as hell. Yeah. It was a jaripeo, too. You know, it was cold as fuck. But <laughs> the music was jammed. Yeah, the, it was... That it was a good event. Uh, I think that was like one of the only jaripeos there was throughout the whole year. Here it was. It was in Illinois, which bro, I thought. Tamal was, was right. I think I heard of that one. Bro. Yeah, it was. Uh, I think my cousin was close to, to Markham, Illinois. Yeah, yeah. You know that. Um, but every regional Mexican band that you can think of, you know, Gerardo Ortiz. Um, man, for some reason I cannot remember all their names right now. Any hip hop? Uh, yeah, I've done Twist, uh, then Project Pat. Ooh. Um, which I'm a huge fan of. Yeah, yeah me too. Uh, you know, I like I love all that, like the trap music. You know, like the old trap music. You know, see more. Yeah. Um, let me see what else. Um, I was actually gonna do Three Six Mafia, uh, in 2020. They were gonna have a concert in Juliet, and then that got canceled. You know, because of COVID. You yeah. know, so I was pretty excited for that. Hay más dinero con esos genres or no? Um, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I've done, I've also done a lot of country music artists that were like uh, an American Idol or whatever, but uh, I can't remember for the names for some reason. <laughs> you a big fan of Tamil country or no? Uh, not really. That's why I probably, I probably can't remember the names. Mm. Uh, yeah, but uh, there's there's more money in those because they ask for more specific things. And is the sound different, bro, or is it the same? Like, tienes que trabajar el sonido diferente because of different. I mean, obviously because of different instruments and stuff like that, but. Or is it the same to you, like just by ear or like like for country, bro? Mm-hmm. Like these specific instruments they play is gonna be way different than a pinche tambora and oh, you yeah. know flauta, flutes or whatever, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You so know, is I you're like, of... is that does that become a challenge for you though, or no? Like, no, oh, not shit, really. This is gonna be different, or like a lot of bass in the hip hop, bro. Like you know, yeah. Three Six Mafia, Project Pat. But you know what about uh, the hip hop <clears throat> uh, events are all? They're mostly just the DJ. They're, those are like the easiest gigs you can. Oh have. really? Yeah, because it's. It's just a DJ that needs two outlets and then a couple mics, you know, and then the DJ takes care of the rest. 
you know, you don't have to worry about doing too much equalizing and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Damn. See, I didn't. I thought it was gonna be like harder because like. Nah, it's easier. It's man. easier. Yeah. Hell yeah. Um, as far as like equalizing things, I think for me, I do it all by ear anyway. So I try to listen to the artist, um, like genre right before you know, like a whole week or whatever. I'll, if I know I'm gonna have a country event on Saturday, I'll spend the whole week listening to country. You know. Para saber dónde tienes que oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, Just que la guitarra, to get okay. that feeling for it And then it'll be like Oh, okay, cool I know what they're supposed to sound like You know I don't want to get there And then be like Oh, shit Their kick sounds like a tambora now <laughs> You know <laughs> 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 They're going to be like Yo, man This is a no banda you know? Like, what's up, dude? <laughs> That's dope Hell yeah Has any of them uh, Big artists or, or whatever Have they taken their own engineer? Yeah And you just I, basically Step to the side And let them do their Yeah, definitely Um a lot of the times when, like, artists come from, like, Mexico or whatever, they'll bring their own engineer. They'll, so you don't, no matter they'll ask, Yeah, exactly. They'll ask for specific things. The reason why they ask for specific things is because that list is created by their engineer. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so it'll be like, we need this mixer. And it'll be like, why? And it'll be like, because their engineer works with this mixer, you know? So that's why it's specific, you know? And then it'll be tricky for them when it's not a specific mixer because they'll be like, yo, I don't know this one. And now they can't really do their job the way it's supposed to be done. So, yeah, it, it happens all the time, you know. Most of the time, they'll, I think it's got to be like eight out of about eight out of ten times they have their own engineer. And if they're just, coming from out, out of state, or whatever, if they're coming from out of state, yeah. A lot of local groups have their own engineers too now. <laughs> Damn. For real, you know, yeah, and it's cool for me. Um, what they do is um, they'll bring their own little mixer. And they'll have all their wireless mics in there. And then they'll just ask you for two channels. And then that's it. All you got to do is give them two channels. You put the volume up and he'll take care of the rest. You see, see the way, Like it sounds just as, as, as if you were equalizing it. Yeah. Or you feel like if they would have gave you the chance, it probably would have sounded better anyways. But um, I mean, because now you're just working off two channels and wireless mics. And we know how wireless works. Yeah. It's not the same, bro. Yeah. Well, well a lot of the times... It'll sound real good. Okay. Yeah. So it's not even... You know, if it doesn't sound good, I'll tell the engineer, like, hey, you know, it's kind of sounding a little weird, <laughs> you know? Team on. But then that's why, you know, like, we're there too, you know? Because, you know, if you can... If, as an engineer, you got to be able to take criticism. Like, if if you're in a band and you tell me, like, dude, it sounded bad, you know, I would want to know if it sounded bad. Because I don't want to keep making everybody sound like that. You know, I would want to go back and be able to fix it. You know, so... If it ever sucks, let me know. <laughs> yeah, you want to you want to make yeah, it right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, mm. cuz I next time you play, I want you to be able to say, "Oh, okay, badass. It was good." You know. So if the engineer is not as great, you know, I'll let him know. You know, and I tell him like, "Hey man, it's, uh, it's either this is a little too loud or it's a little too low, you know, hey." And then for the most part, they're, they're really cool about it. You know. I think that's the thing all engineers have. It's like we can tell each other things. And I'd be like, oh, all right, cool. And that's it. Yeah. And they got to fucking fix it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got to fix it too, you know, because the band will know. <laughs> right. Compacheco, what else you got, brother? Este, privadas, bailes. What do you prefer? Um, Money. Or the, <laughs> wherever it's paying, right? <laughs> he like, money. Because I was going to say, like, you, I'm, I'm assuming you probably got to end the agenda. And you, 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 yeah. if you have a crew, you probably split them up, send them in different places. You know what, man? I like both. Um, they both have their cons and their pros. Privadas is kind of like um, the money is always consistent. You know, like you don't have to worry about them coming up to you and be like, hey, que no salió? Can we get a rebaja? <laughs> that happens oh, to you guys damn. too? Yeah, hell yeah. It's damn. the first people that happen to, the audio people. They'll come up and they'll be like, yo, um, it wasn't as packed as we thought it was going to be. And you think we can get a discount? And you'll be like, oh, damn it. You <laughs> know? But I always thought, you know what, man? I have this thing where I tell everybody the same thing. I would do the same amount of work if there was 20 people here versus 2,000 people here. Were you going to give me more if it was popping? And they'll be like, no. And they'll be like, all right. <laughs> you know? Hell and yeah. then That's a good way to look at it, bro. And that's a perfect way to relay your message. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? And they'll be like, oh, no. You know? And then I'll be like, all right. And then don't, don't, don't try, try to hustle me. Yeah. Right. You know? But then I think... That's gotten around already where, like, everybody that works with me, they already know that, yeah. you know. So, 
there's been promoters that I've I've seen where it hasn't worked out, bro. They brought like groups, and then you know it was just like damn, it was dead as fuck. And I'll tell them myself like, hey man, you know I'll give you like a two hundred dollar discount or something like that. Yeah, it you comes know. out of you though. Yeah, you know what I mean? it comes out of me. People yeah. you probably work with regularly, they always oh, yeah. get your business, and you're like, hey, you know what? Yeah, I definitely. Know, but then, there's other promoters that are like, no nah, man, I don't care if it was dead. Here's the money, you know. And those are the promoters that are like, hell yeah, you guys are badass. You know, I have a lot of clients like that. You know, I think maybe out of all the promoters, there's only been one that has like, that I just don't want to work with anymore. <laughs> Shut them out, bro. Shut them out. Nah. <laughs> nah, okay. But do you still or no? Nah, I'm not going to do that because if something happens to me, they're going to know it was me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but you still work with them anyways. Like you just rather not, but uh, if, whatever. If it comes up, you still do? Yeah. But under certain uh, under different circumstances, all right, they'll hit yeah. me up. Yo, I think I need sound for this. All right, cool. Um, you mind sending me half right now and half as soon as I get there before I do anything else? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. And they understand yeah. why. I'm sure. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, hell yeah. They'll be like, oh, like, some of like, I mean, that one person was like, why? Be like, because you didn't want to pay me last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they, that's what well, I'm saying. And they know why, but yeah. they still want to play dumb and shit. Yeah. You know, sure. But other than that, everybody's super cool with man. I work with everybody. You know. Sí, con man. la competencia del competencia. <laughs> everybody. Money's money, bro. Yeah, oh, money's yeah. money. No, like I told you, man. Like, like as far as like the musicals, we we love seeing you, bro. You know what I mean? Thank when, you. Man. When uh, we see you, we're like, we're no, we're we know we're in good hands. You know, <laughs> like you're not gonna um, fuck us in any kind of way. We're, you know, we're cool with you. We we chop it up with you. As some unas chelas or lo que sea. You know, it's cool as fuck. Yeah. Este, but I was gonna ask you for the for the bailes, um, these uh, three way battles, these battles that we that we've been seeing. Well, obviously. COVID, no, no, no fucking bailes right now, but lately it's been a lot of fucking battles or two groups at once, three groups at once in one stage. How do you feel about that, bro? Um, I personally don't like the battles. You don't like them? No, I, I like to see a group play its full set. Like, because I don't know. I, well, I mentioned this earlier before we were on the podcast. Yeah. When someone that rents audio knows that there's going to be a bunch of groups, they would like to charge for the extra things that they're going to take. Of course. I know I do, you know. Um, if a promoter calls me and they tell me, um, Estilo Especial is going to play, and I'd be like, cool, you know. And who else is going to play? I'm going to take the certain amount of mics for those, you know. And then, um, But then if they tell me, like, oh, yeah, it's going to be um, un norteño, un cierreño, y una banda together, I'd be like, what the, f-? you know. Like, damn, you guys couldn't tell me ahead of time. You know, so I could have prepared. You know, I would prepare. And I have the stuff for it. I definitely have all the mics for that. But mics are expensive, man. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mics are like anywhere from 150 bucks to 200 bucks. And then you got to buy a cable for it. And then, <laughs> you know. They, and, we're talk- and we're talking top-notch shit. You're not yeah. bringing garbage mics, you know. Yeah, exactly. So- you know, so you're talking about, man, a banda easily alone is like 19 people, you know. You got to have more than 30 mics up there. You know, so for me, I don't like them personally. Then when you don't have the enough mics, a band will start playing. And then the next band will start playing. They'll grab those same mics. And then next thing you know, when it comes time for that other first band that started playing first, all the mics are everywhere. And you're like, damn it, <laughs> you know. But that's how it is, you know. Gajes del um, oficio. Yeah, gajes del oficio, exactly. You know, it's. I don't like them personally. I I like to see the. As a spectator, I would love to see like the one band that I went to go see play more than three songs. Right. Yeah. But you also see the the. I don't know if you do see it, but I, at least I do see it. Where it's like now the people exigen mass, <clears throat> where it's like you know back in the day you could have three bands. And you were good. Like, oh, yeah. As far as like, oh, yeah. llegaba la gente. The whole baile, yeah. And it's almost like now, it's like, bro, you need to have like fucking 10 bands for you to get a decent amount of people in that door. Yeah, that's crazy. That fucking sucks, man. It. I mean, yeah. People people don't realize, though, that having all these bands is jacking up the price at the door, too. 
You have to. You have to charge more. Because yeah. before we used to, I mean, from what I've talked to some of my guys, though, so it's like, man, before you throw a bylet, 20 bucks, and then you were good. You know what I mean? It was yeah. three, four bands. Now it's 10 bands, and it's like, well, you have to charge 40, 50 bucks at the door. Like, yeah. how else are you going to fucking even break exactly. even? You get there, and it um, going to a bylet turns into an expensive thing. You know, you get there, and it's usually not by yourself. It's usually you and your girl or whoever you're there with that day. And then it's like, damn, 90 bucks coming in through the door. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, that's a big you know? hit, bro. And then it's like, okay, cool. You want to sit down? Dang, we got to get a table now. Um, that's a bottle. Yeah. No tables without bottles. You know? So here goes 300 bucks. You're, you're in the hole, 400, 400 bucks right there. Yeah. You know? Any baile. Yeah. Nowadays. Yeah. You know, so... That's why I stopped going. <laughs> That's why I stopped going. <laughs> yeah, oh, I haven't been out to Miley in a while for <clears throat> like you know to to party at least. You know, I'm always working them, so it's it's kind of hard. The only times I would go out to Miley was when when V Live was on Wednesday nights. <laughs> the one Milwaukee. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, those were badass Miley's. <laughs> those were sick, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did you have something, bro? No, I was looking at the, at the oh. questions here, bro. Uh, favorite <laughs> bands. Or your favorite band, local or, or a famous band? Uh, or both? I'm going to say famous. One of the more famous <laughs> ones is like um, MAS, but when they would play corridos. Now oh. it's like all lovey dovey. Yeah. You know, and Calibre 50 too when they would play corridos. Voz de Mando, um, Los Alegres. You know? Del Barranco? Yeah, hell yeah. They snap. Oh, you, hell you set yeah. them up too? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I mean, Los you Alegres know, is the shit, bro. Los Austeros, you know. Yo, Loki, I, I was sleeping on that that um Calibre 50, bro, for a minute, dog. Yeah. That's a good group, man. Yeah. They're, they're, they got a good thing going, bro. I mean, obviously, they're popping weight, but I'm saying, like, I was <laughs> sleeping on them, bro. I wasn't I wasn't rocking to them like that. Yeah. Those they, those they are, snack, for, for Paisa music, those are, that's my style. Uh, Los Alegres, you know, Los Austeros, stuff like that, you know. Um I don't, I'm not a fan of the corridos tumbados, <laughs> right. you know, because I, yeah, you know what, I get it. You know, people are into weed right now. People, uh, they love that. They they love the corridos about weed, but I'm not a weed smoker like that myself. So, no, it doesn't know. resonate. And plus, those for me, those corridos are too slow. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know? Any any uh, local uh, band? locals? Yes, um, Escuela, Le Mans. Um, I think they used to be those banderas. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Causa y Efecto. They don't, they don't exist anymore, no. but that's what well, that was rock one of them. Yeah, the yeah, that was one of my favorite bands. Uh, let me see. Secta, Picudos, you know. You know what, man? Chicago has probably some of the best bands. Here, here, yeah, there local, was a- local, I can probably say every band sounds good. You know, right now, I don't, I, there's none that I could say, like, oh, they don't sound that great. Bro, they're all pretty badass. This is where the next question <laughs> would probably be perfect, bro. Opinion on why Chicago hasn't been on the map since the Urangense era? Or you feel like it is on the map now? I mean, I, I don't know if it's uh, at a big scale, but what do you think? Man, you know what? I think, I think it's not on the map because they seem to want to do what other states are doing, like Cali, you know? Okay, there's all these people from Cali that come over that probably locals over there, and over here they make a big deal out of them. You know, so but I feel like it's hard to say, bro, because allá in Cali, bro, it's a whole different vibe, bro. Yeah, like in general, like money como que rola más machina. Yeah, I don't know, man, because people be partying like Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday. Like the weekend isn't even a weekend, yeah. bro. It's like they're partying like during the week, bro. And my mm-hmm. cousins, they're posting all the time. You know, like they're. And you're right, bro, with groups that are, to us, like, Los Rebeldes and shit. And, like, they're they're just chilling with them. Like, my cousins is just chilling with them, chilling, you know? Like, it's nothing, bro. And Mm -hmm. over there, they might be locals, but, I mean, they're a big-ass group. But, como que el el dinero maybe rola diferente allá o que rollo? I don't know, man. Something's different, bro. (laughs) You know what? There's uh, there's people investing in them. That's why. The, The local groups from over there, they'll take some and invest in them. You know, over here, it's more like... There's a lot of promoters, but not a lot of these promoters are investing in some of these local groups. If they were, you know, maybe, maybe, a little bit maybe different. yeah, maybe it'd be a little different. You know, like if, if one of these promoters was like, yo, let's get one of these badass sounding local groups and, 
hit up all these states and you know they maybe would be on the map right and the crazy thing bro that when you hear these local groups say like oh dude like they try to sign me or like you know something mm -hmm. happened in their career even if it didn't pop off it's always somebody from like california you know like that try oh, to sign them right yeah like you know even if it didn't work out you know yeah. and it probably didn't work out because you're right they're probably trying to sound like somebody from out mm -hmm. there you know Yeah, definitely. Pero, check it. como que trae No, I was just going to say, like, right now, I do feel like este, the, the groups, like, uh, put each other on. Yeah. Like, more more so now. Do you have a, oh, you have a, uh, it's my bad. bad. Well, not really. Uh, prepared. It worked. <laughs> He's an engineer, bro. He's got it. <laughs> Professional drunk. <laughs> um, but I feel like they, they put each other more, like, they support each other more now yeah. um back then i feel like it was like a selective group you know it's kind of like these five bands fuck with each other they might be cool with the rest of them but i mean like as far as like shot them out on their social media and stuff yeah. like that i feel like now they're doing that a lot more you know and they weren't doing that before though it literally be like the four or five top bands in chicago that was it it was like an exclusive red carpet type thing i don't know what you want to call it you know what i mean like they'd be cool with the rest of the bands but it's kind of like they were need, on a you different need, level you need to be over yeah. here in order for you to yeah kind of get a shout out from me or kind of whatever and i mean not, not in a snotty way i just feel like that's just what it was right if but, they were on a different level they didn't want to look down anymore they're like you know what pa arriba, compa. type of shit maybe maybe right. I don't know what it, you know. I'm mean, suddenly like they will all get along. Everybody gets along, kind of, you know, to a certain extent. Yeah. But I feel like now it's like kind of like you know everybody tries to put each other on, shout each other out. So and so comes out with a CD. You see like four or five other groups like already sharing it. You know, just yeah. giving each other shout outs like, which is fucking badass. That's what we should be doing. Yeah. You know, but maybe that's a start. Maybe that's kind of like the way it's kind of going. Hopefully, but. I don't know. And we, we should see, bro, with these groups that are out popping right now, which are music, muse, musically, they sound pretty good, bro, like really good. And maybe they'll, they'll be the next group that pops off from Chicago, bro, or puts Chicago on the map or whatever, you know? Yeah. Because there's a few that are that are doing their thing out there right now. Oh, yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Definitely. So yeah. I think, like I said, bro, I think Chicago has, like, talent, like, straight up, like, I've seen groups that come from like other states and I'm like, man, so and so from local is a lot better than this, you know. And then you got people paying money to see these other groups. It's about like, people, man, yeah, who you, you know? who's who's behind you though, bro. Like yeah. you said if they're investing in you yeah. and they're moving you, hey, that's what gets you gets you places. Yeah. Maybe we don't think that we're on the map, but maybe we're on the map for other states. You know? Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure the people from Cali from over there are just like, oh, these are our local groups, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But when somebody from another Yo, state Yo, bro, but they throw down, and the music and the corridos that they play are like <laughs> fire, bro. It's like, it's rare when I'm like, and and the, and the not to shit on the local groups or anything, bro, but I've heard some of the corridos and shit, and they ain't the ones, bro. You know what I mean? Like they're, And they're, they're good, yeah. but it's not the corrido that you're going to keep going to, you know, like... You know what yeah, I mean? Like, oh, like then the one you have a repeat on your car. And exactly. Stuff. <laughs> it's not that. And I mean, I love corridos too, bro. And I, I've yeah. heard the the ones de aquí. Like, yeah, I'll play it once or twice and shit, and it, it's good. But it ain't it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so I wonder what's up with that. But to move on from the music, the last question was, what's your favorite genre of music? Um, I like the old trap music. You know, Three Six Mafia, um, Project Pat. You know, crucial conflict, um, stuff like that. Back when rap was about dealing drugs, not doing drugs. Mm -hmm. Got it, got <laughs> it. Yeah. I don't know if yeah. that makes any sense. You know? uh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Like all the songs now, they're all auto tuned, and they all talk about you know being a perp and all that. Yeah, being yeah, uh, rob, robbing the plug or some shit like that. You know, or whatever. You know, I don't know if you guys remember that song ran off on the plug or whatever i'm like man yeah back in my day when you ran off on the plug you were a dead man the next day you know yes, you, don't, you don't do right. that now <laughs> yeah you know see uh, one you know that's i think that's my favorite genre and then after that is uh corridos you know that it yeah it's a tie you know you switch on and off when you get bored of los alegres uh, you go yeah. to project pat bro yeah exactly when i pulled up actually earlier i was uh Listening to some Project Pat, and then right now when I leave, I'm probably gonna be playing the latest. Or <laughs> yeah. So my some personal question, bro, since you're a sound engineer, bro, do you have a sound system in your car? I don't. You know what, man? I just got that truck like not too long ago. But you so. did in your previous one, like you're a big sound guy too in your car, or not really? Like, you um, 
Yeah, you know what? I had a before. I used to. Have, I've always driven old school cars. I've always had Monte Carlos, Regals, and Cutlasses from the '80s. So I've always had big ass sound systems in it. I took apart one of my subwoofers that I use for live events, and then I put two of those subs in one of my trunks. How did that sound, bro? Yeah. Bro. <laughs> so check one of our big sound yeah. sound system guys. Yeah. Now that we're older, we don't have I don't have it in my car anymore, bro. But I used to love it. This I, guy used to I love had, it too. I had some JBL like subs in my trunk, and then um, that was just something crazy. It's on real crazy, real cra- my trunk uh, wouldn't latch on after a while, so I had to like fabricate something to keep my trunk closed. What yeah. did you uh, put it in? A Caprice or something? Uh, no, it was a 1980 Monte Carlo, kind of like the one from Training Day, but it is uh, not. Not with without the hydraulics. And stuff. What did you do with all these cars, bro? Because now they're worth a lot of money. Um, yeah, I know. I I wish I didn't sell them, but uh, the last one I had, I raffled it. Uh, it was a nineteen nineteen eighty six Cutlass, and I got that Poppin'. one. From Ohio, I got that one from Ohio, and I raffled it. Uh, the guy that won that car won it for eighty six dollars. You know, Damn. so he came up. Hell yeah. <laughs> For 86 bucks? Yeah, he came up. He sold it to somebody else I know. Right but, away, probably. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, it is you know, what it is. Come up. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. And hey, the de la rifa si sale, machine? Yeah, you know what? That's the only raffle I've ever done. Oh, and okay. um, Because I know that that's a thing right now, bro. Like, rifas, I see it everywhere, bro. Yeah, you you know what, though? Um, you the think peop- the pandemic the people that pandemic? The people that do rifas, though, like, they got to be careful with how they do it uh, because they're illegal. Are they really? Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't know that till after. Oh, maybe I'm. <laughs> maybe a, I'm just seeing things. I've never a, seen them. It's a form of gambling. <laughs> I had looked it up, and then I was like, "Ah, fuck it, I'm gonna do it anyway." But uh, it's a form of gambling. So, you know, so I, I've actually uh, there was like this famous guy on Instagram who raffles things, and then he got raided by like the cops and stuff, you know, because he was doing raffles and whatnot. They took his trucks away. They Damn. took money, like, all that stuff. I was like, dang, okay. <laughs> You know, so that's the only raffle I've done. I was just, it was a quick come up. Yeah, I've seen, I, I seen people on Facebook, even when, like when the like, oh, when you send me the payment, don't put raffle, yeah, <laughs> no, or don't put, don't put this, like even just leave it blank, or oh, even for know. squares, I mean, you know, they don't yeah. want you to send yeah. like oh squares or any any type they're of they're looking like, for those key yeah. words, you know, yeah, like, exactly. What the fuck is this, you know? Yeah, because if um mm. if you're taking quick pays and they all say raffle number this and this and this and that, uh. Whatever bank will freeze your bank account. You know? Oh, snap. And they'll report you. And you'll be like, oh, shit. So you, you guys learn something every day just like us. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Quick tips, <I> eat. <laughs> Yeah, so that's dope. Um, Go ahead, Checo. I wanted to uh, talk about your, uh, the restaurant or, or was it a bar restaurant bar. that you guys oh, have? It's yeah, a it's, a bar, it's a bar grill. You know what? Since uh, when 2020 came around, at the beginning of the year, uh, we got offered an opportunity to run a bar in Melrose Park. It's called El Picosito Bar and Grill. Picosito. Um, we like we jumped on it ASAP. You know, Laker makes money. You know, definitely for sure. Thanks. Um, so we jumped on it, and then we we're like, yeah, you know, new business venture. And I was like, twenty twenty, as cliche as it sounds, I was like, twenty twenty is gonna be our year. And then, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, because I was like, yeah, hell yeah, you know, we got a brand new stage, we got all these gigs, you know, and we got we got a bar now, you know, it's gonna be a badass year. And then um, it was like March, I think. My first gig, check this out. This was this is how I thought it was gonna be a badass year. My first gig for that stage was gonna be St. Patrick's Day. The one where they dyed the river green. Mm-hmm. They were gonna have the mayor give a speech and whatnot. I was guy hurt. I was gonna hire some guy who was gonna come by with a drone and take camera shots and make a whole video commercial out of it. You know, saying we did uh, St. Patrick's Day. You know, hire us for your next event. Blah blah blah. This and this and that. You like know? badass. Like make it. Yeah. Good promo. You know, because St. Patrick's Day is basically the beginning of the like the drinking first season part. yeah the first part exactly <laughs> i didn't want to put it like that yeah, but yeah it's the, the beginning of the drinking season for the year because you know it's the first big party that they have where you know you go to bars and you drink green beer you know and then um when they told us hey uh we're gonna postpone st patty's day and we're like oh okay cool and i'm like how much you know on the news they said like 14 to two weeks or whatever and then we're like okay um next thing those two weeks go by and they're like yo we're gonna postpone it indefinitely and then uh 
Damn. All these other gigs that you have on the agenda with us, they're going to be canceled. This was coming from the city. Um, and I was like, what do you mean? Like, like all that, canceled, you just saw you the know? money. I was like, oh, damn. And they're oh. always good on the money, right? Yeah. Like, that shit oh, yeah. Straight. Yeah. The cities, uh, when you have gigs for the city or gigs for uh, suburbs like like Chamber of Commerce or stuff like that, um, the checks are always right on time. Badass. And early. Perfect. So before yeah. you get to the gig, you're already paid. You know, perfect so. type of business, bro. Yeah, you know. So when they called and they canceled, uh, I got I had maybe like thirty something gigs that got canceled. I was like, oh shit, this is not like, the year. Yeah, I was like, this isn't gonna be like a one month thing. This is gonna be. I'm like, if they're canceling the whole year, I'll and this go. was early on. This is March. Yeah, this is March. So they knew something we didn't know. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. A lot of the people that were like uh, the special, the people in charge of special events, they already knew. They, they were kind of like, yeah, this is kind of an indefinite thing. We don't know when it's going to get better. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I was still kind of hopeful that we were going to have gigs by May or whatever. And then um, it was, it's around April, the beginning of April before like Sábado de Gloria hits. Because that's like the next drinking holiday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What is it? Yeah. So, no, so once... Beginning of April rolls around, and I'm expecting phone calls for like Sala de Gloria and stuff like that. But then it's watching the news. All the ranchers are like, yo, man, we're not going to have a Sala de Gloria event this year either. You know, like, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, um, Plaza Garibaldi had like 10 gigs canceled on me. I was like, dang. I was like, okay. I'm like, this is going to be bad. You know, and then at that same time, the bar that we had just started running, we had it closed for like three months. Like uh, from March, from yeah, from March all the way to like the end of May, you know. So we have this bar now, but it's not making any money because it's closed, yeah. You know? And then we they let us open up, and they're like, you can only open up if you're in an outdoor patio. We're like, okay, cool. During the summer, it was dope because our open our outdoor patio was open till two. You thought she was popping? It, yeah, it was badass. It was like um, it was popping um. And we were doing good, and then uh, winter rolled around, and they got cold, and they were like, "Yo, we're gonna kind of shut down again," because I think it shut down again for like a like a few weeks, and then they were like, "We can only open till 11. I was like, "Whoa, what? Like we're a bar. Like people don't get to the bar till like nine thirty, ten o'clock. You know? right. How are we gonna close at eleven? But man, you know what? Like we've been closing at eleven, and it's been good. Like people come out." And they try to get messed up before 11 because they know everything else is going to be closed. And then uh, it's been all right. And now I think this Monday they extended it. Now we can close at 12. It's like one more hour. But it, okay, cool. Whatever. You think everything? Was, we'll take it. It's going in the right direction then for sure? Um, or you man, feel like we're still far away from that? Honestly, I think we're still far. Jeez. I think I think uh, I act like I go out. I haven't been out in there forever. <laughs> <laughs> I think COVID is gonna mess up twenty twenty one too. Yeah, my bro, son I, thinks the same thing. Chuck E. Cheese has been closed for a while now, bro. So I haven't, <laughs> we haven't been out at all. I don't know. I've been, been chilling, bro. I've been fishing, like 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 fishing phone calls and stuff. You know, like I go, I call promoters. Hey, what's up, man? You got anything planned up? Uh, planned for twenty twenty one? Chamber of Commerce and, and stuff. You know, um, I try to hit up like. All the event people and everybody's telling me the same thing right now. They're like, we don't know when we're going to be able to do events. I'm like, well, damn. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, um, I might have to start throwing my own events. <laughs> Something. Hey. Mm -hmm. You've been doing a hard promo on the restaurant, bro? Or did you already have like, um, ya gente que, um, como se dice, wey? When the reg oh, regulars. regulars. Oh, well, check this out. When we took over the bar, it already had its regulars. Cool, cool. Yeah. You know, um, if you ever get a chance to get a bar, <laughs> jump on it, especially if it's regulars. Those regulars, they they come and they spend every day, every day. But, I mean, we've been trying to do, we want to do, like, something different there, but it's kind of been hard because you can't have too many people inside the bar. We try to follow the, the COVID regulations and stuff, so you can't have more than, like, um, uh, supposedly more than 25% of what your capacity is. You know, as soon as COVID, like they tell us you can Clears open up. full. Yeah. 
you can open full how you were supposed to open, and we can close at two a.m. because we can close at two a.m. That was our, that's our what our license says. As soon as that happens, we're gonna start putting grupos, bro. We got we have a sound system in there. We have a little stage, and we're gonna start doing like grupos and free violas. You know, like pop in, bro. Have spend yeah. on the bar, oh, and, and you're gonna get live music. Oh yeah, hell yeah! And I want to get good groups too. You know, like uh, all the good local ones. You know, like una banda y un norteño, and then um, no cover. Damn, you know? who's not gonna want to go to that? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure, bro. Especially you know, and then it'll be like once it's full, it's full. You know, oh well, you know, Done deal. come early next time. You know? Simon. but I want to make it a weekly thing. You know, because we have the bar, we have everything. Why not? And then maybe as soon as um, as soon as we can start doing events, if I'm, I want to try out this thing where I try to work with promoters this time. You know, um, I'll tell them like we know that the budgets are low right now because once this is all over, budgets are gonna be low because they they haven't been making money either. You know, so I'm gonna let them know like if you want, I'll go have on you with this violet. You know. Because you don't have to pay me five grand for production because I'm going to put it up. You know, you'd be saving money, you know. And, and make, then start growing it from there. Yeah. And then making a, a business partner. You know, you'll be saving money by not paying for production because I'll be your business partner from now on. You know, but it, it's it's a thought. Yeah. You know, And you're looking I, for, I mean, obviously you're looking for different ways since 2020 was not the year for you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or for the business, I should say. Exactly. Not necessarily for you, but... Uh, business wise, mm-hmm. exactly. For I might sure. have to become my own promoter. <laughs> hey, looking for make, opportunities, make my the own best way to make money, bro. <laughs> yeah. I have everything I need, you know, yeah. all the audio, and the plugs too, the... bro. You know, everybody, you know, yeah, exactly. But I want to, I want to work with all the other people too, you know. See, man, everybody yeah. can eat, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. So sorry, bro. Oh, with this, I think we'll start wrapping it up, brother. See, man. Um, any uh, shout outs, any anything you want to add, man, before, um, we, before we close it down. Shout out to all the, all my work colleagues, all the audio companies, you know. Uh, we know 2020 sucked and 2021 might be bad too, but <laughs> stay in it, you know. Bye, bye, bye. Mm-hmm. Compa- it should get better, bro. These vaccines yeah. are rolling out. I think we're going to be in, in good shape mid-year, you know. God willing, bro. Probably not because you don't want to take it. I probably won't, but don't worry about me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not at the violence anyways. I'm at Chuck E. Cheese, asshole. All the kids are safe. No symptoms. Oh, and I want to say thank you guys for inviting me, by the way. Also. Oh, for oh, sure, for bro. Sure, it was bro. A Thanks for coming you, out. Hell yeah. Good combo, bro. Good cotorreo aquí. Do you want to add anything? Um. Oh, what is the name of the restaurant, bro? It's called El Picosito Bar and Grill. El Picosito El Bar Picosito. and Grill. So That's if you're in Melrose. In Melrose, in Melrose, Melrose right. around that area, go check it out. Exactly. Yeah. So if you want to come by... Mention that you heard this or saw this, and I'll give you a free shot. Hell yeah, Damn. bro. <laughs> okay, we going. That's what's up. That's dope, man. Right now. We popping out, bro. Nah. Shout out to uh, everybody out in that area, man. Go check out that, that bar and, and grill, bro, and, and support the local business, uh, especially Hispanic local businesses. 100%. You know, you know what's up? Yep. Check us out, bro. Subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, you know, the whole nine. And that's it. That's it. It's a wrap. Go pass the filter. filter. Peace. Peace.